recording. What it do, players and trainers? It is your boy, the Blazing Squid, with episode two of the power rankings for LDL majors. And I'm not alone. And I know it's not Spartacus. It's Spartan275 joining me. Say hello. Hey, greetings, everyone. Hope you guys are having a good time. Yeah, so I'm hoping you guys are enjoying these power rankings. At least you hope you enjoy the week one. We are going to be your co-hosting for the entire season, guys. So all through week 12, we're going to be analyzing these battles. But I'm just anxious to get these power rankings into it because this week was the week of upsets. That's Big the upsets, week. Most definitely. I don't think... I was thinking on the ride home, I was like, I don't think one former LDO champion, excluding EVO champions, Isaac, I know you're going to call out for this, but I'm talking about major champions, which is Arthur, I, Matt, and Brennan. None of them won a match this week. Just crazy. Super crazy. But enough of that. Let's jump into the power ranking. And at the 16th spot, you guys have five seconds to guess. Five, four, three, two, one. Longest five seconds, fastest five seconds ever. We have the Lake Erie Gyarados. <sighs> Spartan 275. I'm going to let you go because I will hammer this guy if I go. So I'll let um, you be the, the good cop. Well, uh, the, the lead with uh, Aerodos was nice. Toxic thread and all, but the fact that you use sticky webs against a team that has superior on the enemy's uh, enemy uh, enemy side I mean was may not may not have been like the best choice. Uh, another thing that I've noticed uh, was that she had uh, anticipation over iron barbs for Ferrothorn, which kind of blew my mind as to like who uses anticipation on Fer Ferrothorn, so I don't know and the fact that he didn't really switch into Arcanine earlier to take care of the uh, superior was actually pretty shocking in my opinion uh, other than that uh, it was really hard a uh, hard game to watch to be honest I completely agree very very difficult game to, to really watch um, Truth be told, I don't know why Sticky Webs even came. I don't think Shay actually even looked at his opponent's team because usually, even though like, even if you didn't build for it, at team preview you see a superior. Superior is known for his contrary boost, so like that's a huge no Sticky Webs kind of rule. I've never used no. Sticky Webs, especially if I have Sticky not against a superior. That thing is super deadly. Um, it got a plus four. I think plus four and even O code Arcanine, which I found extremely crazy. Yeah. As you mentioned, that he brought as well. in Lando T before he brought in uh, Arcanine. If he had brought in Arcanine and Superior was at plus two, you had a much better chance of knocking it out. Instead, yeah. he brought in Lando and Lando got obliterated. Yeah, the anticipation. I guess he was counting for the hidden power fire, which his opponent did have, but his opponent was one step ahead and went for a substitute, which I was like, this guy's on a different level. His opponent's on a different level, but Shay, gotta do something, buddy. Gotta do something, because week three, you have an even tougher opponent. So, good luck with that, man. And then we'll jump off to spot number 15, and the Zionville's Zygards, and their coach, Robert, from the Evil League. Oof. I think this was another difficult match to watch. If I'm not mistaken, who did Robert go against again? He was up against Jordan. Jordan and Jordan. The Utah Valley. Uh, Town of Flames. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> yep. So, um, uh, I, I have to give him props that he had uh, Felsinger on his set with uh, Mega Beedrill. Which would probably been able to sweep his uh, Jordan's team, if only that uh, that guard jump was wasn't scarfed. Um, another thing was Luke, the Lucario. 
I'm surprised that it never went for any priority. And, and that's literally pretty much like that the second game that Lucario just died and didn't do anything. And I, and I was kind of sad. Because I like Lucario. The typing of steel and fighting is a really good offensive uh, typing. But the fact that he didn't use it to prevent Mega Glalie to out or outright sweep with like either uh, extreme speed or maybe vacuum wave as priority. It, it was kind of a shocker. And having a chance to get 1v1 by Heatran was also a very sad thing to see as well. Yeah, that was... We'll, we'll talk about that from Jordan's side. But I agree. I, I think I saw the Felstinger. I really didn't think Felstinger was going to kill. It was, you know, quad resisted. I was like... We had to put in the points with uh, adaptability and stuff. Megabitrial's ability. Yeah. yeah, so I didn't think that, but it killed her. I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be a... It's gonna be a sweep for Mega Beedro now, because especially when you get a spell fingers finger off like that. But wow, and just the fact, yo, I don't know, like, yeah, the 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 chance he's staying in with the the Magma Storm, like, it made it very very difficult. That was painful for me to watch. The poor, like, poor Chancy, like. It was getting taunted, it was getting toxic, and it was stuck with Magnosaurum. It was just all around. They had a pretty picture for Robert. But yeah, as you mentioned, the priority, maybe even having... Because it, it gets access to Vacuum Wave. It has access to Vacuum Wave, and it has access to Extreme Speed. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, um, And also Bolt Punch as well. True, bolt punch true. About that. Not sure if it was... Maybe it was just a lack of preparation for Mega Glalie on Robert's end. Because... I don't know. Because he did have, like... B for both ends, I, mm -hmm. I want to say that. They both had uh, a mixed set of both walls and wall breakers. Yeah. So, I think both of them were pre prepared to break down uh, the each opposing's wall. So, I don't know. It... it I don't know how. Uh, I hope that Robert will be able to bring it back into week three and able to uh, step uh, up his game. Probably if he brings in Lucario, maybe consideration of having like a priority move. Because Lucario is known for uh, using a lot of its uh, priority moves of E Speed, Bold Punch, and Vacuum Wave in his sets. Yeah. Especially, yeah, I think Isaac had a Lucario on his championship for the Evo, and he did very, very well with it. Especially sometimes getting off those nasty plots and stuff like that made it very, very good, useful. But I think just Girder, Girder was a problem. We'll get to that part later. Yeah. We'll jump out to spot number 14 and the Burningham Jolts. Oh, man. You know, he had a very good lead. I'm going to admit it. DJ had probably the better lead of the two, the two players coming into this match. The only thing is, I saw Pinter and I was like, oh, you know, he's gonna have Rock Slide on his, on his, you know, Mega Agron. You know, that's why that's exactly what I was thinking. And then I saw Rock Slide, Fire Punch, and fire I'm punch. like. What? So I was actually looking at Brandon Seam right now, and I'm like, why do you have Fire Punch? I see Ladias, Halucha. Empoleon, Salazzle, Skeptile, Piloswine, Mega, Pinsir, Tapu Bulu, Umpreon, Raichu, and Blaziken. So I'm like, um, anything that gets hit with Fire Punch also gets hit by Heavy Slam. And probably even much harder. Like, Tapu Bulu is going to get hit so much harder by that. Um, Skeptile, like all these mods, I was like, Rock Slide was the right play overall, like 10 times out of 10. <sighs> but I will admit, he was playing good. DJ was playing yeah, good he was, the first half. He was able to take out uh, the Specs Latias, Brandon from getting uh, very problematic with his Incineroar. But whenever, once uh, Incineroar got knocked out and Mega Agron got weakened enough, pretty much it was nothing more than a a, a sweet field for uh, like a fitz, fitzer so i don't know it, uh, 
to be honest, I would definitely say uh, for the next time, maybe consider having Rock Slide or Fire Punch. Uh, uh, maybe you had f uh, Rock Slide, maybe you had Stone Edge, who knows, but I, I would personally say that uh, Rock Slide would have been the better, the better choice to go for overall. Agreed, 100%. I completely agree. Um, I'm not gonna, like, truly bash on you because you really had some really, really great plays. I love the bulk that you had on Incineroar, as mentioned. You lived in specs Draco from Lottie, Latias. So I'm like, wow, that was amazing. And it, it lived just enough to the pinch berry to activate, get all that HP back. I was like, this is very, very good prep. There was just slight holes, which Brandon found. We'll talk about those later. But just rock slide. And also, one of my advices for players, I don't like giving out advice because then like I, I reveal all the tech. But when you have a setup mod in front of you, it's better to sack your mod than let it set up. That's the advice I can give you, DJ. Had you attacked Mega Pincer instead of letting it set up, you would have been in a much better position because Agron comes in with more HP to then knock it out with the Fire Punch, which you originally had instead of Rock Slide. But just food for thought, sometimes you have to risk the roll and not let an opponent set up. And we'll jump up to the spot number 13 where we have the Winnipeg Jellicent and their coach, Matt. Uh, truth be told, guys, we don't have much commentary for this one. Except there's salt everywhere, Matt everywhere yeah so what happened is is that their battle uh part way through in their game got dc so in order to uh try to recreate uh so in order to keep the uh the video in they started to recreate it to the point where some damage would uh some of it was the same but um i don't know it, it was kind of Hard, because I watched Jack's video. Uh, and so did I. How, but it was, but the the uh, the reason that um, I can't put a lot of commentary into it is because I didn't really see it, and I, I could believe in uh, someone's words from it from uh, from what they said. But overall, I don't know. And but I do have to say one thing uh, overall about mass battle is that. Ha having the, uh, to lose uh, his crocodile uh, meant that uh, it, uh, Jack's uh, Miss Magnus didn't have any sweet uh, switchins. I mean, uh, Miss Magnus had a, a free like shadow ball on any uh, of master remaining mons, and every time that Mega Venusaur uh, was able to tank the hit, it got a special defense drop, so it was hard for him to keep it alive and ended up sacking a lot more mons than he should have yeah um like as you mentioned we all we have is really the recreation and, and jack's word from it I, I know matt's been telling me you know this this and that like i think it was like five special defense drops super crazy match when it comes to rng but if matt's um i mean jack's word is true that matt swapped in crooked out on Tyrantrum, when he had Metagross, I think Metagross was probably the better switch in, especially if you have Bullet Punch, or I know he was probably maybe expecting, I don't know if he was expecting weakness policy maybe, or like a rock polish set. Probably. But I'd rather switch in Metagross to take uh, take on that the, the head smash, and then maybe eventually switch in Crook, because as you mentioned, as Crook went down, it was the biggest check to Ms. Magius, and now it's gone. And unfortunately for Matt, his his Crook's Choice Scarf got knocked out so much sooner. So maybe that's why he thought it was an expendable Mon, but we can see that it didn't work out too well for him. It was not so much your play style, but more of the hacks, Matt. And it happens, and I'm sorry to say that, man. And sorry to see that, truly. It, it pained me as Venusaur came in, Special defense drop, you were forced to switch out, sack something. Venusaur came back in, 
Shadow Ball, Special Defense Drop. We were forced to swap back out, sack something. Venusaur came in the third time. Shadow Ball, Special Defense Drop. Switch it back. No, I think you sacked it. At that point, you were you were done. You just sacked it. It was it was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous match to watch. <laughs> but if enough of that, we'll just move on to the 12th spot. Guys, disclosure. Spots number 12 through 5 are all pretty much equal standings in my eyes. In my eyes, they all had a good week and a okay week, we can say. And considering people's past history and stuff like that, of how well they... It's, it's a combination of everything, but all these players are 1-1. One, one, and they all played well one week and not so well another week. And it's not truly because they misplayed, but maybe their opponents played slightly better. But in 12th spot, we have the Albany, Obama Snows, and Coach Ryan. Yes, that's Ryan, who's in my division. Um... Came to shine. He came to shine this week after a narrow loss last week, but this week I he capitalized. I think he he saw the opponent. He saw his opponent set up sticky webs for him. He had a contrary superior, and he abused that. He truly did. Pretty much so. Abused it to the point where his superior got five kills. Was it right? Yep. Pretty yeah, pretty five pretty kills. Sweet. 5-0 sweep, man. Superior put in so much work. It did not miss. Um, he got to substitute off, too, when he needed to, which was yes. perfect. Because that meant it was going to be eating any hit. And if his opponent even had anything to take a Leaf Storm and knock it out. Which is, I don't know. Ryan, like, congrats on the win, dude. That was a very straightforward battle. I wish I can have you a little bit higher, but due to your opponent's lack of preparation and everyone else's opponents above right now actually look like they had better preparation overall. That's why I have you in 12th spot, but I know it's going to only get tougher from here and you probably, most likely than not, you will be moving up. You have any other comments to add? Uh, not really. Uh, th this one was actually a very straightforward match. There was nothing much I, I would have to say about the game. Agreed. All right, so let's move on to the Utah Va the Utah Valley Talent Flames and their coach, Jordans. You can take off on this one. Uh, I have to give, uh, give Jordan props of how he handled uh, the Chansey with his E-Trend. Able to trap it with, uh, with Magnus Storm, try to weaken it down. I'm kind of... If he about that, he immediately went with uh, his Z Z move, which was from Overdrive. Uh, I was kind of a bit iffy that he actually just straight up used it uh, immediately after he trapped the Chansey. But other than that, he was still able to wear it down to a point where um, Robert had to sack the Chansey because uh, it was such a low HP, and a lot of uh, Jordan's mods were at, at a pretty decent us. Uh, speed to outspeed the Chansey so that the Chansey wouldn't be able to soft boil. Um, good uh, good way of using Garchomp to prevent the Mega Beedrill from like from being a problem. I I'm kind of a bit iffy the fact that you went with Stone Edge over like let's say Stab or Earthquake but I could also understand it as he ended up uh, Robert switching into Cloyster uh, when you uh, try to set up and the way that you played girder was excellent with able to uh, take uh, prevent cloister from sweeping uh, able to knock off uh, Togedix Eviolite and weaken it a bit to the point where Megat Glalie can come in and able to just destroy the the rest of what uh, of Robert's team yep uh, agreed. He, um, I think Jordan capitalized on what he needed in this win con. He preserved the girder. Uh, girder checked the cloister, 
like anything that that was set up he had a check for it i, I really love that you know the guard yeah. check the 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 plus three mega b drill the plus two cloister was checked by the girder um he tran checked the chancy i think like Jordan came into this with like designated checks for every single mod, and the gimmicks worked. The gimmicks worked in this yeah. one, and we, we saw it. We saw poor Chansey suffer. We saw the poor everything suffered. Everything was just <laughs> suffering. And Jordan, keep up the good work, man. That was a solid win. Gotta give it to you, yeah. my dude. Hope to see a lot more of that throughout the rest of the season. For sure, uh, but no, I, I think MVP of that match was Mega Glady, though, for sure. Most that, definitely. Like the way it came in, I I can see why Brennan wanted it now, and we'll get to Brennan yeah. soon. But yeah. Glady did so so well this match, very well. And we'll move on to spot number ten and the Moon Valley Mewtwo, who honestly, if I had to say, he. I thought he was gonna lose this one. Thought he was gonna lose really? this one until he got I in that pincer. It was a close game. It was a I close, it was game. Be a close game. Uh, uh, but uh, the one thing that really uh, struck struck me was the fact that he had Ske uh, Sceptile and used uh, Tapu Fini's Misty Terrain. Uh, for uh, Sceptile's Unburden ability with Misty Seed. And I'm like, this boy is on another level. And I was very surprised that he, he missed that tech. Uh, uh, instead of using his own uh, terrain to get the Unburden boost. Oh, uh, yes, I see what you mean. Instead of bringing yeah, it's his own top of Bully, that's top of Finny. Smart plays. Uh, we know Brandon is a he's a smart player. He's been here before mm -hmm. LDL. He's shown his stuff. That's why he's still in majors. But yeah, it was um, a pretty awesome match to watch. Um, for the most part, I was like, man, you know, Brandon's not putting any dents into 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 the team here, and I'm like, come on, like I need to see a breakthrough and. Like, especially, like, I think it was Skeptile versus Como, and then you see the Dragon Pulse come off, and, like, I was like, man, DJ's one step ahead, because he had the... Hapon Berry, the is berry, it? I think it's Hapon Berry. Berry plus the Mr. Terry. Yeah, it was so just... It, like, it literally did nothing. And I'm just, like, here, like, well, will Brandon catch a break, and little did we know that Como versus Pinsir was going to be... And actually, I give Brandon, like, 100 mad respect... Because he never let his pincer mega evolve. Not once. Like it, it came in two moments before it even yeah. faced the Como. -O. But the fact that he never mega evolved meant meant he never got the flying ability. Meaning he didn't have to take times for weakness from rocks. So I thought that was very very smart. As you guys can see, it comes in very clutch as Mega Pinsir is able to live a Fire Punch from the Aggron. But the the fact that he was able to scare out DJ, get that Sword Dance up to just... I think it was Quick Attack Superior. I think, yo, I, the fact that I saw Tapu Fini die from full and a Krozma was beautiful to watch. That was just amazing. What a plus two pincer can do with Aerialite, is it? Right. Aerialite, yeah. yeah. It's ability. Ugh. I really enjoyed this match, I admit. That was a pretty good one, too. Yeah, way to Nobody pull yourself out of the ground on that one, Brandon. Yeah. That was a great one. But yeah, I don't. <laughs> For a second, I thought he crit. I thought, oh, he crit the Tabu Fini. It was no crit whatsoever. No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. Uh, but we're going to jump off into spot number nine. I think I dropped Brennan a lot. The Salt Lake City Swamp Rates here. A very tough match this week, I must say. A much uh, tough match up against uh, Shane. And we'll get to Shane. Uh, but Brennan, I, I don't think 
it was so much that he played bad, but his opponent's preparation was so good that it made look Brandon look bad. If that makes yeah. any sense. I can understand that. Yeah, um, the lack of prep for the Alamo, Alamola, Alamomola, uh, Alamomola, so Alamomola. It's always oh, a tongue twister for me. But yeah, it was just. I think the only things he had for that was the Galvantula and the and the Del Fox. But more so the Galvantula, Del Fox needed to get up a few combines, and he had the Grass Z. But he had to use it on the clay doll. And once he burned it, uh, I think Shane noticed that and and took advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. But man, I don't know. It's like this is not Brennan. I, I know Brennan told me he was he had just come off a twelve hour shift and stuff like that, but Brennan, I know you can play so much better than this. Way better than this. <laughs> Um, to be fair, I, I would think that um, Brennan uh, thought that sacking Haunter would have been the better play as he assumed that Skull was going to be uh, uh, going to be thrown in. But then it, the knockoff hit and it O-code, well not O-code, but with the chip of Stealth Rocks, it took down, uh, Alomola took down a Haunter. Which is one knockoff, and a little mole. It doesn't have like the greatest offensive stats, it, uh, but but it's a hunter. The fact that it's, <laughs> but still, it, it surprised me, and the and then it, it, and the fact that when a hunter went down, it gave Shane the more opportunity of getting more uh, momentum on Brennan, so it was hard for Brennan to get back into the game. Yeah, um, my only comment, I, yeah, as you mentioned, the knockoff, I follow enough, like, leagues, uh, league battles, especially, and more, you see actually more nowadays, physical Alamola, Alamamola, than actually special. I actually, I, I 100% was expecting liquidation in that, that switching, actually, over Skulls. Like, Skull is great and all, you get the burn, but at the same yeah. time, his physical attacking is just as well. Um, I'm actually trying to run the counts here to see how much that knockoff would have done. Oh, wow, the rocks mattered. It depends yeah. on what's, yeah, yeah. If he has no investments, it's an Evolite on Haunter with no physical offensive. It was Light Orb. It was life. It was uh, uh yeah. Oh. Haunter was life. Orb. Yeah, it does seventy eight to ninety three. So I think the rocks did matter. Oh wait, that's that bold, matter. actually. Yeah, regardless, seventy eight to ninety three. Yeah, so I, I believe that the rocks did matter. Uh, switch, uh, switch. Never mind. Um, there you go. Okay, I took it off. I don't know. Why I had negative nature. It's eighty eight point three to one hundred and five. So yeah, the extra chip damage from the rocks made it exactly what it needed that's crazy of a more guaranteed yeah yeah okay wow yikes um but yeah just i don't think brendan was as prepped for the wish passing duel that we saw this week crazy those two uh sylveon and alamomola put in so much work this week uh, I don't think Brendan was as prepped for that, especially, um, like, uh, he didn't have that great of recovery options as his opponent did, and, like, before you knew it, his opponent had a full HP team, and his team was barely hanging in there. Just barely. Sorry for him to get back. Yeah. Like, I think the Calmine Delphox was still, it was, it was great. And stuff and, and especially even getting the sticky webs like the sticky webs was a great add-on but mega low punny was still outspeeding so much stuff that i was like for a point i was like is it even necessary <sighs> mm. 
I just want to move on because. I don't know. We'll just move on because. Okay then. It's. I think it's just Shane. It was just Shane. We'll, yeah, we'll just move on because it was just Shane's better preparation in in the end there. And then we're gonna have here. Top eight. Top eight. Yes, we do have the Outback Kamalas. Everyone knows, or uh, if you haven't known, what happened here was Outback Kamalas and the Russellville Rockets played. Russellville Rockets won, but they broke a rule, meaning they took a forfeit and the Outback Kamalas won. Technically speaking, yes. Yes. It's well, funny because the Russellville Rockets didn't even have to break the rule. Yeah, they, I don't think it, they had to break the rule overall, but we'll talk about them when we get uh, uh, get to Steven when we get there. Yeah. But right now, we can talk about how Jesse could have actually won that, to be honest. I 100% agree. That's why I don't have him in the, like, in the bottom eight, because Jesse had a fully set up Mega Charizard X. Yes, but the fact that it was paralyzed at, at a very crucial moment really costed him uh he did mention that uh and he even showed it in the battle that uh that it did over half uh on dawn fan and if it wasn't paralyzed uh, paralyzed during that turn and the following turn he was able to knock out dawn fan agreed but i don't know uh but after uh Mega Charizard X went down. Oof. It, he started to lose a, little, uh, a lot of his momentum a bit. Uh, because because yeah. of that Dawn Pan. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, just. Um, like. I don't want to put this. Like. I'll, I'll, I'll admit, RNG was, was a factor. Was a huge factor. Um, every time RNG came his way, I think, like, he got his mind very clouded, I think, um, <laughs> it's just funny to watch, it's a, it's a pretty fun, funny video to watch, um, I will admit, Jetman99 did have to prep, he had to prep to get the win, he had the team to get the win, um, super, it's just super annoying when you have to deal with hacks, especially paralysis, Probably one of my least favorite hacks because you never know when you get fully paralyzed. You never know when you get fully paralyzed and it hurts you when it, when your speed gets cut in half. Yeah, and your speed cuts in half, which is actually I, I consider slightly better than what they used to have it because like your speed was like one six or one sixteen or I, it was really slow. I'm, I'm glad they kind of nerfed it, but still. Um, yeah. Haxi battle for Jetman 99, main on Rage, pretty badly, pretty badly. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he, he just couldn't get anything to go his way. Really couldn't get anything to go his way this week. And that's pretty much it really, like nothing just was going his way. Yeah. Uh, and I think that going, going on forward, that it won't, it won't be, it won't slow him down. It, I don't think it's gonna slow Jesse down. It's just gonna give him a reason to step up his game and probably bring it back on, on the upcoming rematch uh, against uh, the Rustville Rockets in like what, week 11. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll give him more drive into uh, having his revenge. Yep. And then we have here in seventh spot, the Toronto Total Dows. And yours truly, the Blazing Squid. Um, I enjoyed this match. Uh, I really, um, I didn't really care where I was placed in this one, but it was up against my little brother. We'll get to him, but I truly thought I had the team to get the win. And fun fact, guys, we were actually discussing this earlier today. Uh, for those that don't know, my Scarfitini outsped his Scarf Latios 
because he only had enough speed to outspeed my Zero Aura. Ooh. So that was very interesting. And then on top of that, I had 35 HP, meaning my Vitini was at 19% health. Ice Beam does 18% non-crit. <laughs> so the fact and that he crit roll. me... <laughs> the fact that he crit me meant that Victini went down. Had he not crit me, I would have won the game, which is super crazy, but I enjoyed the match. Uh, I don't know. What are your comments on this match? Uh, I, I don't know, because to be honest, it was it, like the... Uh... Like some of the other games, there were act this one was actually very quick. It was like 17 turns. It, it went back and forth. I was like, "Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win?" And then when the crit happened, I'm like, "Feels bad, man." It, as uh, you were get you had to stick with uh, I believe yours uh, Zygarde 10 percent was Bandit. Yeah. So you had to end up going for E speed over Thousand Arrows or Outrage. Uh, against Latios as it was, of course, uh, Scarf, and then he was. So I, I don't know. You had, I think you had the uh, the tools to winning, especially with the Victini, but uh, it, it's just RG. RG really affected the outcome of the game. To be honest, when does it not? When does it not? But that's that's. <laughs> That's how like 50% of my videos go down, but whatever. Regardless, I had fun. Uh, I really love using the the liquidation, Waterium Z, Kabutops. Fun fact, that was a 12.5% chance to kill a fully defensive Gly, um, Gliscor. And I got that 12.5% 12 12 chance. So Really? Man. Yes, we ran the calc. So we ran every single calc and we're like, you, he's like he should have lived and he should have but i don't know it was it was funny it was a fun match if you guys have siblings, i think the rng guys really messed up your that game really wanted to make that game interesting yeah it, i think it did which um i don't know but i okay we'll, we'll probably get to him later because right. my Silvali, i was very disappointed in my Silvali. <laughs> hmm. uh but yeah um uh, Isaac walks away 1-0, but I had fun. RNG played his factor, but that's cool. And we'll move on to the Russellville Rockets and their coach, Steven. Steven, I think he played amazing. I think he played very well. Uh, I mm -hmm. did tell him one thing, though, which was, um, like, if it's Florges versus Charizard X, like, stay in, just, just Moonblast till it dies. But MN does what he wants. That's okay. Because it worked out, um, I think it was fun to watch me. I'll stick with skill swap. Yeah, uh, that that kind of threw me off. Uh, that he he would be willing to give Mega Charizard X prankster and having like because when you think about it, what if uh, Jesse had Roos on his Mega Charizard? Exactly, I was thinking the same thing. It would have been a very difficult mon to take down. And exactly. Sure, it, you're reducing the damage of Mega Charizard X with. Uh, by taking off the tough, tough gloss, but you're still giving arguably one of the best abilities uh, in the game to uh, to a Mega Charizard X that can able to click Dragon Dance and and probably have Roost. So I don't know, but the way that he not only used Skill Swap on it, but used Thunder Wave on it, uh, and also get, uh, set up screens really. Uh, help them out and some of uh, some of the uh, outcome of the game uh, another thing was I had to give props with uh, how he used Dawn fan even though it wasn't it, the Z captain I think he did what he did to win a gunk shot with Dawn fan to try to catch the Salaby was re relatively well thought um but i i to be honest uh probably a choice band uh dawn fan or a life or dawn fan would have done the same jo uh same job or expert belt or whatnot 
Um, so for to be honest, my advice for Steven, if he really wanted to use Don Fan again as a Z captain, probably suggest maybe switching it out with one your uh with one your what was it, Kingdra that you have as a uh, tier tier three? Yeah. Might be like switch it switch uh switch that out for Don Fan as a Z captain since you did uh exceptionally well with Don Fan with the Z gunk shot. Agreed. Um if you want, you can even make both Kingja and Don Fan your Z captains. That's 200 points right there. But yeah, I'm even considering making a different Z captain because I have Silvali, but I enjoy using Silvali and its memory is too much. But yeah, Steven, um, Don Fan, amazing, amazing. The way you used it, especially behind the screens. And like talking about how Jesse got his, his mind like very clouded. Like he was calking and he's like, yo, Celebi should do this much to it. And then it does less, and he's like frustrated because it's like, and he's just like completely forgetting, like oh, whatever. But you, you did amazing. You really got into Jesse's head. <laughs> I know he was going crazy that night. Um, Meowstic, like very unusual set, but you were able to pull it off um, very well. Don Fan did what Don Fan does, and actually better than one usually Don Fan does because Don Fan is usually known more for like setting up rocks and thing. I think that also got to Jesse's head. Because one play you were trying to sack it, you just went for rocks and he's he got so pissed you set up rocks. Like it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> but yeah, no, keep up the good work. Um because uh thing is Steven went into this match knowing he had the worst matchup against Jesse. Because you know there's certain teams you have very bad matchup against and this was one of them for Steven. Um, Steven got in as much intel as he could. He came to me for advice. He came to to, to Matt for advice. And we told him, dude, like, you got to make changes to this team. And he did. And he was able to play it out and came out with a victory, even though it was forfeited away. But it's a victory in my books. And then we come up to your, your opponent, the Birmingham Aaron and their coach. The Lazy Ghost. Lazy Ghost. He played well. He did. That's all I have to say. He played well. He actually had a team that that would actually would have uh, beaten my team. Uh, he had the one the one mon that that could have like really ruined the the entire my entire team was literally Infernape, and I was like uh, I try to think what to do what to do, uh so. And because how Infernape can be a choice scarf and could be e run either a physical or a special set, so it was hard for me to uh, have a mon on my team that I could able to use as a lead. Uh, I mentioned in, in my team builder that uh, that I went that I led with uh, that I wanted to lead with uh, Slow King. Uh, so just to determine whether or not uh, the Infernape was uh, like short, Bandit, Specs, Scarf, Life Orb, whatever you name it. Um, he played relatively well. I give him props of using light screens with uh, his Fortress. Uh, I, I still didn't, don't know what the item he had on with Fortress. Probably Cussed at Barry. Uh, and also Paragon 2 with both Toxic and Thunder Wave. That was huge. That was huge coverage. But um, but near the end of the game, it all came down to a 50-50, to be honest. It really That's did. That's all it was to it. That one turn where uh, he was trying to set up Substitute with Needle King was literally the 50-50. And, and that was a crazy 50 50. Uh, yes. Yeah. Man, uh, like, I don't want to expect anything less from Arthur, though. Yeah, without a doubt, he played exceptionally well. Yep. Um, I think you guys just really went back and forth. Like, this one, I think it was he started off well, and then you. You, you always catch on and you were able to start countering and then you started like like you were able to get I, off your toxic to... on the Porygon too which 
comes in hugely I was glad later that, on. I was glad that I didn't burn it uh, earlier. Exactly. I actually wanted to use Toxic on it, so... Yeah, and... and then... Finish uh, up. Uh, make a chart. It was like... Once the rocks were gone, I, I wanted to keep, make sure that Mega Charizard would come in safely, so I, I would have a healthy uh, Mega Charizard that can take at least maybe a hit or two before going down. Because I know his team is very very fast uh, with uh, Salamence, Infernape, and uh, Mega Gardevoir. So yeah, and yeah, so but I'll, I'll discuss more about the battle uh, when it gets to my turn yeah um but yeah no you guys man i really enjoyed this match i i think prep on both ends was extremely well very well it came down to the last turn did arthur have the mock punch <sighs> and it's something you usually don't see especially on a scarf mod but it's okay it was a very, very good match to watch. Both opponents, uh, both players prep very well. Both players um, played it out very well. Um, no, it's just, I'm in awe. I'm in awe because this game was really good to watch. And we'll just get into more information about it once we get to Antony's side. And we can get the first hand experience from Antony. And we'll ask the big question Was Scoutland? Banded, but we'll find out then. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Spot number four, we have the Miami Manetrix. As mentioned, the seven green arrow, I don't know what he goes by, it's Isaac, whatever, came in super, super clutch. Um, Scarf Latios, uh, he, he bluffed me well. He bluffed me very, very well, knowing I, I very well know that. Scarf Lottie would outspeed Scarf Victini. Little did I know he he was even outspeeding Scarf Victini, which is crazy. Uh, but his coverage overall on that Latios was very good. He actually was telling me now it was Surfer Victini, Ice Beam for my Zarigard and my Mega Pidgeot. He had Draco Meteor and he had Thunderbolt. The only thing that really stopped it was Scavalier, and I did not bring it. So, very, very well. Um, also, the. He got me well with um, Cabalion. Cabalion lead. Yeah, the Cabalion lead. Um, I did not expect to outspeed whatsoever. I really did not. And the fact that he was, he was actually running Focus Blast by TNMZ. Can you believe that? I was wondering about that, uh, that he, uh, went for Fighting MZ, then went with Hidden Power, and ended up with Switch, and I'm like, is this a special set, or is this just, like, a mixed set where it's, like, half physical, half special? Nope, it was completely special. Hmm. But yeah, I think, <laughs> this match, all you really see are, are Zygarde versus Latios. Because I think Zygarde got like four kills and Latios got four kills. It was crazy. It was just those two matches. And everybody else is just Death Otters for the most part. Uh, but Latios being his all-star for the week. Having that amazing coverage that pulled the win for it. Getting the necessary crits it needed as well. Unfortunate, but that's the game we play. Yeah. Um, but Isaac making his way to the top four. He came from Evo as number one, and he's proven his worth right now. Proving his worth, and he even goes against Ryan on Thursday. That's gonna be crazy for me to watch. Get insight on. Do you have anything else to add for Isaac? Um, not really. Uh, all I say is that he played exceptionally. He he did what he had to do. He RNG and. Like I said before, RNG Gods played a factor in this game. It did. It did. <sighs> Moving on to spot number three, the Swansea Swana and their coach Jack. As we were mentioning in the battle when we were talking about Matt, it was just Jack clicking Shadow Ball. Like they recreated the whole match, just clicking Shadow Ball and killing 
you know, getting special defense drop and killing. But everything was looking like a two shot um, Jack. Once again, realizing that Crooked Out is gone, making Miss Magius another exceptional mon. That's why it is the kill leader for majors right now. And it just. Kills. It, it's Specs, Shadow Ball destroys, especially when you don't have a dark type or a normal type. It just kills. I think that's all we saw, really, right? Yeah, Miss Major is clicking Shadow Ball. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> but whatever, I guess those these two battles were just straightforward. We can get yeah, to the good stuff. Short and sweet. We can get to the good 30 plus battles here at spot number two <laughs> the good year gujas and their coach shane who also came from evo this is a good one because he's up against the former ldl champion here brennan and my oh my did we have a match my oh my uh the the um for both sides, it, it was good momentum uh, early in the game. A lot of 50 50s, a lot of uh, uh, switching outs. But then, when once Hunter went down uh, from Aloha Mola, and Shane had the more, uh, a better momentum advantage, Brennan, especially with the doubles uh, with support, which I initially thought was going to be triple uh, with support with uh, Jirachi. Yeah. But when it got knocked off by uh, Weavile near the end and was revealed it was a salt fest, I was actually surprised that it was a, a salt fest. Actually, special defense uh, with like uh, with some uh, other item that wasn't leftovers. He's probably trying to take hits from like ne Neha Lego and stuff like that. Which yeah. I could see coming. Especially the pre marina. Speech from pre marina you can take it from. Uh, but yeah, as you mentioned, uh, I really think he did a great job. Especially having knockoff, which was awesome. Uh, he even had magic code on that a little more. He did. You're right, 100%. He had magical wish, knockoff, and toxic. So I thought that was a. Like, a great coverage overall. It was a pretty amazing coverage. That thing stayed as long. Stayed as, oh my god. That thing was able to tank up any hit. And the fact that it has regenerator makes it so much better. I think. Yeah. And, and along with Sylveon, I think those two go a long way. Those two are going to go a long way. Claydol. It's crazy because uh, Dragaji didn't see the field. And I would expect Dragaji to come in, especially against the girl Vachala or something like that. But I think Shane only needed five months and he proved that he only needed five months. Uh, worked out to his advantage 100%. Um, it's super crazy because I don't even think he was minded by the sticky webs. Like, his team was already slow enough that it really didn't even play a factor. And whenever Mega Low Penny would come in, he just fake out. Just fake out and switch out. Fake out and switch out. And he played some very good doubles, actually, too. Yep. I think there was one where it was Sylveon versus... I know he pulled a very, very good double. I can't remember it right now, but... Um, Shane was just one step ahead throughout the whole match against Brennan. Even though Brennan did burn the... I think Brennan got the first kill, but regardless, Shane was always ahead. He played right into his hand. Uh, this was Shane's week, man. Sorry, Brennan, to say that, but it was his week. And he, uh, and he proved it. And that's why he's at the second spot with a solid 2-0 record, and I think he's like a plus 6 differential. If I'm mistaken. But with that said, let's jump into the number one spot. Who also has the battle of the week. The Victorville Victinis and their coach, Spartan275. Hi. 
You should, you should feel honored uh, right now. Uh, I don't know. It, it can't, I'm telling you, it came down to the... It, no, literally, it did come down to the 50-50. Uh, when uh, I lost Mega Charizard Y, it was like, okay, I had to get sand up so Stoutland could try to do something. Uh, and, uh, and of course, Tyrantor was poisoned and whatnot. And I kept seeing uh, uh, Arthur's new king going on Super Substitute multiple times. And near the end, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna. Uh, because if New King uh, pick gets a substitute and I try to switch out, that's game. That's literally game. Uh, but I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go for, uh, go for Crunch over time. If he attacks, good play on him. If he doesn't attack, I have a chance of winning. I could bring Sam back later on I tried to stall off the sand as much as possible so I could just bring uh Tyranitar back in yeah uh but uh yeah he, he played exceptionally well and, and I'm surprised how well uh Doutlin took uh Outrage so well uh, against uh the Salamence well, I think it was actually more bulky. It, it uh, had a little, a little bit help, uh, eight uh, health in it because uh, I mentioned it in my uh, team builder that I had enough. I put enough speed so that uh, because it was going to be a jolly set, but I stick with. I uh, ended up with the adamant because it didn't save and whatnot. So I went with the adamant set uh, and I had enough speed. Uh, in sand to outspeed Scar's uh, Salamence. It's nice. Uh, and yes, it was banded. And yeah. after having uh, taken out, it was better for Stoutland to just click frustration against an entire team. And I don't know if the crit mattered uh, against Infernate, though. Actually, no, crit didn't I, matter. I, 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 I mean, I, I counted just in case if it was like max HP invested, uh, and it was like a 50-50 chance to, if it wasn't a crit. But overall, yeah, it, I, I just I was just surprised uh, how I was able to win win that game because I, I felt like I, I started felt up a bit after uh, losing Needle Queen, which was uh, meant for uh, like most of his physical bonds, but. Uh, other than that, I, I try to uh, get back to it. Won the 50 50, and then that's, that's all there is to it. Oh, yeah, you played it well, man. I, the Scoutland was such such a great bring, especially in the sand. Um, knocking out straight old coin the Gardevoir, straight old coin the Infernate, uh, two trying the Salamance. Uh, especially, I love it, especially like you brought it in against Needle King and you were able to click it. And like he, Arthur was able to, to get no information because Needle King was already low enough. So it was just, I think it was crazy because I think at one point it was actually Arthur up 4 2. And it, it looks like it was all hope yeah. lost for you. But Scotland came in, got those four turns it needed of the sand to close out. It was, it was a great match to watch overall, man. Uh, you two really really gave us a run for our money really did and did you know actually i heard these um pokitubers talking about it the other day if needle king beats up needle queen is that considered domestic violence wait what what <laughs> we'll just leave the viewers with that thought here <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You know, Needle King and Needle Queen. Like, you know, yeah, I, it's yeah, it's a good like, question. What? <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> but we'll leave you guys with that <laughs> thought. And that's going to be the power rankings for episode two of LDL's Majors Season 8. It's your boy, the Blazing Squid. You guys are amazing. Stay blazing. Squid out. Spartan 275. And until, and until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Peace.